um, after some technical problems, you can see that we can have the presentation, but this is the second presentation in this room, so you still have time to run away. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk uh, about Russia. Uh, my, my, name, my name is... It's not happening. I don't know. There is no presenter. <laughs> yes. So while while people are leaving, uh, my name my name is Victoria. This is my username, and this is my name. And my main project is uh, Russian Wikipedia. Uh, this microphone is to record video. This microphone is not for you, but I hope I hope that my voice is loud enough for people to hear. I used to play it in the student theater, so I should project. Uh, so, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, what is happening in Russia. And I know that there are people from Russia, and they may correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, why in the times of cholera? Uh, as some of you know, in Russia, uh, it is forbidden to call uh, the war of Russia in Ukraine the war. It is called a special military operation. And that's why it's a euphemism and also Times of Cholera is a good book by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. So, uh, Wikimedia R R Russia chapter was created in 2008 and there are at least six user groups, uh, some of them thematic, some uh, there are regional. Uh, the main project is Russian Wikipedia, which uh, has uh, one, uh, about 1.9 million articles. Uh, most of you here will know all that, but just to recap, because I discovered that in the UK there is a whole generation of people who never heard of Soviet Union. So to remind you that uh, there was a Russian Empire, and after the Russian Empire, there was a uh, so, uh, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And the official ideology was that this is opposite of the Russian Empire and all uh, nations which will live to together in harmony. Uh, however, it happened that Russian was taught in schools all across the regions and if you were Russian, you had a right to refuse to be taught uh, national language. For example, I am from Belarus. I will be talking about Belarus a bit, uh, but my native language is Russian because Belarusian was considered to be unimportant. Uh, this is a map that shows uh, regions where Russian uh, language Wikipedia is the most popular, pro uh, most popular project and you will see that the map is approximately corresponds to the uh, map of Russian Empire. Uh, there are also some interesting uh, things, for example, in Germany, Russian Wikipedia is popular as well. This is due to the large number of immigrants, uh, German, ethnic Germans from Kazakhstan, uh, Russian Jews, uh, and other people. And you can see that in some places in Ukraine, uh, Russian Wikipedia is overtaken by Ukrainian Wikipedia. So, uh, Wikimedia projects are not only uh, in Russian language. Uh, there is a lot of project in so-called small languages inside of, of Russia, uh, which are uh, native people. So, here you can see projects in Russian underlined, uh, in black, and you can see that there is a lot of 
other Wikipedias. So, and then there are uh, also Wikisource and uh, other projects, and then a number of uh, languages are uh, in the incubator, and there is a number of languages in Wikisource incubator. So, when we are talking about Wikimedia projects in Russia, uh, we should not only think about in Russian language, but in other languages that can connection from other uh, parts of the movement. So, uh, in the beginning, the government didn't, uh, didn't think about Russian Wikipedia, and it was a, a, a good period, but in July 2010, uh, Russian Wikipedia was self-blocked as a sign of protest against the law which, was, which proposed introduction of censorship in Russian segment of the internet. Uh, but on July 28th, uh, Putin signed federal law on amendments of, to the federal law on the protection of children from information harmful to their health and development. And this is a recurrent, recurrent theme. Uh, I will show you later. Then, when they want to, when the government, any government wants to introduce censorship, they start with uh, protecting the rights of children against internet pornography uh, and things like that. So, again, as all of you know, in February uh, and March 2014. Uh, Russia invaded uh, Crimean Peninsula, which was uh, part of Ukrainian territory. And on the night of uh, the say, 24th and 25th August 2015, Russian Wikipedia was blocked by a number of Russian internet providers. So what happens is that a regional uh, Law enforcement, they complain about uh, an article uh, in, on Wikipedia, usually it's about narcotics, uh, for example, cocaine, uh, and uh, they demand to remove, to remove the article. Obviously, it doesn't work like that. Wikimedia Foundation doesn't answer to these requests, and in some cases, uh, in some cases, if, if the part that they were uh, worried about uh, was not sourced, it can be removed by the editors themselves. Uh, the chapter did a lot of work with Russian legislators, explaining to them how it all works. And uh, in, but in February 22, uh, Russia began bombing Ukrainian cities and started the invasion. And in March uh, 2022, Instagram was blocked in Russia uh, due to the calls for violence against Russian soldiers. I don't know where between the ads for uh, cosmetics and sports uh, Trainers, they found that, but they did. On July uh, 31st, uh, Putin uh, ratified the law that pro prohibits individual and legal entities from participating in the activities of for foreign non-governmental organizations not included in the state register. Uh, so, as I understand that the chapter is included, it is registered, but all the user groups are not are not registered. And the Wikimedia Foundation doesn't have presence in Russia, and this is deliberate, and at the moment uh, Russian litigates against the Wikimedia Foundation, and it's again the same scheme. Uh, they don't like uh, article about invasion, Russian invasion into the Ukraine, and they demand to remove it. Obviously nobody does that, so they repeatedly find Wikimedia Foundation, uh, Wikimedia Foundation is not paying. So, uh, some measures were introduced uh, after Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, this is in uh, Russian Wikipedia, all uh, Czech users 
and editors, these are people who approve uh, the initial upload of the news, are uh, based outside Russia. And uh, all contributions in the articles were anonymized. This is the article of, about the invasion, Russian, <laughs> Russian invasion into the Ukraine. But uh, in articles concerning modern politics of Belarus and Russia, uh, are like that. So you don't know who, who was editing. Uh, also, uh, as any healthy uh, large project, Russian Wikipedia always created forks or rather the people who were not happy with the policies uh, they left. Uh, after the start of the war, there were two projects that were created, so-called Universalis. Uh, don't try to Google this because there is a game which is called something like that, and you need to go to the Russian browser to find it, basically. And it's proud to be Russian. It hosted on the Russian servers as opposed to cosmopolitan Wikipedia hosted on American and European servers. And it's compliant with Russian law. And you can see at the bottom that they have a whole section dedicated to special military operations. That's what they call the war. Uh, the rest of the content obviously was taken from uh, Russian Wikipedia, they just cloned it, but there is more articles than Russian Wikipedia. And it's because they added uh, vocabulary of uh, encyclopedic vocabulary, something like Encyclopedia Britannica, but in Russian called uh, Bergaus and the Front. And you can imagine that the information there, it's not uh, up to date and it's almost useless now. And Russian Wikipedia uh, editors spend a lot of time when at some point it was included uh, because it's free, uh, a lot of time getting, getting rid of it. But at the modern moment, Universalis can boost being the most, the biggest, the biggest Wikipedia in Russian language. The biggest doesn't mean the best, but some people want to be the biggest for some reason. This is uh, more interesting project, uh, it's called Ruviki, and uh, uh, Ruviki was a nickname in the project itself from Russian Wikipedia, Ruviki, but that was taken and the name, and it was opened by a former co-director of uh, Russian uh, Wikimedia, Wikimedia Russia chapter, Vladimir Medeka, uh, his nick on Wikipedia was uh, Dr. Bug, so I call it uh, Bugopedia. And uh, when he was talking about it, he announced it suddenly, people in the chapter didn't know. He announced it suddenly in the news, and when he was talking about it, uh, I was envious because this was going to be the best encyclopedia ever. All the information will be verified. Uh, there will be no uh, vandalism and the community will live in peace and harmony and they, didn't have, they wouldn't have any problems. And uh, I, I was envious. I thought, why, why won't we have something like that, you know? But when they opened, uh, you can see that it has few articles. Uh, it's not, it, it's few articles because they basically went through all the articles about the Russian-Ukrainian war and deleted it. So in this ideal encyclopedia, the war is not happening. Uh, also, they decided to go, as you know, flagged reviews was only the first stage. There was supposed to be verified articles which should have been as good as any article in Newpedia. And at the moment, uh, Ruviki boasts 52 verified articles. Uh, but let, let's have a closer look about this, the most neutral and great project uh, about, for example, about the city Izum. Uh, this is a Ukrainian city which was completely destroyed uh, during the Russian invasion. And if you compare side by side uh, 
the text in Bagopedia and in Russian Wikipedia, you can see that in Izum, the history ends in, in 2010. After 2010, nothing happened. That's it. So uh, when I presented this uh, uh, presentation in uh, Singapore, people asked me if uh, these alternative projects, Universalis and Ruwiki, have enough people to update uh, the articles, because as we know, when somebody famous dies, they go, people, people go on Wikipedia, uh, their access spikes. So uh, I looked at uh, a couple of people that died in uh, August, in August, September uh, 2023. Uh, I looked at Dodi Alfayed, who is a famous businessman, and I looked at a Russian actress. And I must say that that was updated uh, with a day or two delay, but it was updated uh, in both Universalis and, uh, and in uh, uh, Bagopedia. So they probably have a bot which looks at the changes and then they mirror it into, into the Wikipedia. But I don't know how stable these projects would be. Uh, Bagopedia, uh, there are rumors, and, no, and, and there is now an, a good article in Russian press that it's uh, funded by Vnestorg Bank, so they have a lot of money. Uh, Universalis is a private project, uh, it crashed when they advertised it, uh, it crashed because everybody went there, and it's hard to find. So. Uh, when I looked at the, one of the articles that I looked at uh, was uh, Evgeny Prigozhin, uh, who had a very colorful biography and uh, he attempted a coup in Russia and then the coup somehow fizzled out and then he died in a plane crash and I looked at uh, a Bogopedia article and they just say that he died. His plane crashed and he died, and there is no even uh, ideas who, who did that. Uh, but uh, it's interesting that he is a Russian entrepreneur, and for some reason there is zero views. I think that this is some, something wrong, wrong with the script rather than, rather than uh, uh, valid number, but I don't know how many people access this article. It's not that easy to find uh, Bogopedia in the search. It's uh, on fifth, sixth position, uh, but maybe it's because, because of uh, my searches. So this was the per first part and it was about the projects in general. Now it will be uh, about individual u users. So, as you've seen on the map, the Russian language covered a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of Europe and Asia as well, and one of these countries is Belarus, uh, which has two uh, official languages, Russian and Belarusian. So, uh, the two Wikimedians that were detained, they are Belarusian citizens, but uh, they edited mostly Russian Wikipedia. Uh, Mark Bernstein was doxxed, so his data was published in a Telegram channel and then somebody uh, took an initiative, some law enforcement officer in Belarus, and he was arrested. Mark was uh, uh, a good advocate in Belarus. Uh, he was involved in doing wiki education going around the country, showing people how to edit Wikipedia. So he was well known. However, he was arrested on the pretext that he resisted arrest. And they released the video where you can see that he didn't resist arrest. And then what they did, they unlocked his phone. They went through his pictures. And uh, they found pictures of the protests. There were protests in Belarus in 2020, as you know. and. Uh, now he was sentenced for 
in charge of organizing and precarity activities that disrupt social order. He was not an organizer, but if they want to take you, they will find the pretext. Um, it's, not the, it's not the worst outcome because he wasn't put in a long-term detention. Uh, he is under house arrest, but uh, he cannot leave the country for three, for three years. And again, he was lucky that he wasn't fired from his job uh, because in Belarus, very often, if you are even suspected of that, you are uh, suspected of that, you are uh, jailed. And there is another uh, case like that, Pavel Pernikov, and he was directly arrested, and uh, one of the charges was editing Wikipedia. So. Uh, what I'm trying to do is to say that you need to be aware of uh, your own privacy. Uh, remove your tax from photos. Don't share your personal data. Do not use your mobile device to access Wikipedia. Uh, if taking part of protest or anything, use the burner phone that cannot connect you to your uh, other identity. And this is all connected to Russia, but I'm from the UK, and right now in the second chamber of the parliament, they're discussing online safety bill, and it's the same thing of protecting minors from pornography, and they may be, uh, they may require uh, the provider of the information to take it down. So it's the same. We don't like your article, take it away and they, it can block uh, access, uh, the regulator can block re regulator to the particular websites. So whatever country you are, if you're from Iran or any other country, I don't know, need to persuade you to be vigilant and to know that all this is happening, but even in the countries that are considered to be safe, like UK, uh, if they, if they want you, they will come for you and they will find the pretext uh, to do something to you. Thank you. <laughs> Time for questions? Yes. Uh, I come from Finland and in Wikimedia Finland, Finland board, we have discussed for actually a couple of years seriously about the situation in, in Russia and that especially the Wiki, Wikimedia and Wikipedia there are uh, at the present there are wide rumors about uh, about ending the, the, the Wikipedia circulations in Russia. Do, do you believe this is true? Uh, do I believe uh, what is true that in, in Russia? The cutting, cutting oh yes so the question for people uh, People at the back who can't, can't hear the question. The question is, uh, is complete blocking of Russian Wikipedia possible? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we've been waiting for it uh, since the start of the war because Instagram was blocked. WhatsApp is probably going to be blocked. And uh, uh, they already blocked Russian Wikipedia once, as you know. and. Uh, there are incidences right now when people in large region cannot access Wikipedia. We don't know if it's some sort of malfunction or are they uh, testing, uh, testing. So, I mean, any day now, uh, Wikimedia Foundation had a special group uh, when that happened, because we expected that it will be blocked and the uh, Wikimedia Foundation was going to, to take measures as, as they can. But it's not happening now, uh, if it happens, but what Wikimedia Foundation can do, we can just, you know, express uh, our uh, dismay at it, that, you know, free knowledge and all that. <laughs> the more interesting question, the last question, I'll ask it myself and answer. Uh, is why it wasn't blocked so far. And I believe it's because uh, Wikimedia Russia was 
doing advocacy work since its inception in 2008. They went to parliament. They explained to everybody that Wikipedia is not a completely American project, but that you can have balance of views. And if you block Wikipedia, then obviously people in Russia will, won't be able to access it, and they won't be able to edit it. And it means that then immigrants, people like me, would edit it. And we don't have any love for Russia. So I believe that in the end, uh, public advocacy by the chapters, by user group, it works, at least in some cases. Of course, of course, yes, yes, but uh, we have these people, but talk to me after the presentation. I'm running out of time. Prezentacja będzie. No dobra, to ja...